I said it's all right to apologize to your children. Matter of fact, I've already had to do that this week. Just because I'm their daddy and I'm their pastor doesn't mean I don't owe them an apology from time to time. It's easy to, it's, I know in parenting, you've got to lead them in the right way and correct them. But a lot of times we can point out all their faults and it's real easy to jump on them. But the two things we seem to fail to do is praise them and tell them we're sorry when we've wronged them. Mom and daddy, the greatest thing I believe that your children are respecting you is just being real with them. They know your faults and they know your failures. They know you're human. And occasionally when you stepped out of line, they need to be able to hear you say to them, I'm sorry, I failed you there. Would you forgive me? Let's walk on for the glory of God. Some of you might ought to get your kids or your wife or your husband and bring them to an altar and just apologize to them and ask them to forgive you. I've already done that this week. I'm not telling you to do something I hadn't done. I've already had to do it. Some of you may need to do that tonight, mend some relationships. Mind the Lord. This young lady wants to say something. She wants to give work. I want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. July 23rd, 2011 at a missions conference. I was sitting on the back row watching some kids. Before that, that I got saved. But the Lord told me I wasn't. I appreciate God. God got a hold of me a long time ago. My little boy was about to hit me when I got right with God. And all they've ever known their whole life is church. Somebody told me a long time ago that you need to have a family altar. And I said, I'm going to try that. And every night I want them in my bedroom. We all pile up on that bed. Have family altar. And my son got married and moved off and it wasn't the same. And I know one day they're going to move off. These girls are going to get married and move off. But I still believe it works. I still believe old time religion works. And there ain't no other place I'd rather be than right here with my family. 
And I sure appreciate my kids being able to see some of these men of God. We don't need to take these men of God for granted. I appreciate y'all men of God. I just appreciate you what you stand. You preached to my boy for many years, to my girls. <laughs> and these men of God in my house. I fed you many meals. I just want my kids to be around, men of God. I believe it makes a difference in our kids' lives. I appreciate you, Brother Ricky. Amen. I remember this when I was a teenager, getting in these kind of services, this kind of atmosphere. We're blessed, aren't we? I'm not bragging on this, what I'm going to say, I, by no means. But when I was a teenager, I'd go to Faith Baptist Camp. I lived from camp meeting to camp meeting. I loved it. That week was so refreshing. We didn't have no family altar. We have no Bibles. I'd go sit there all week and just take all that in. And it wasn't until my kids come along that I started realizing how easy it is for, for, for young people to take that for granted when you've just grown up in it, you know. I think Warren Wearsby said, one generation gets delivered Another generation enjoys the spoil, and the third generation goes back into bondage. And I got delivered. I won't tell anybody here, Heather, you're here. But you're an adult now, but I won't tell any young people here tonight if you don't have a mom or dad that loves Jesus. You can find grace. Come home from camp meeting and I just, all times I just go to my bedroom. You know, you'd leave an atmosphere like this and go home to all kinds of hell. I just go in my bedroom, shut the door. The Lord was always there. I'd lay in that floor and I'd take that cassette player and I'd play them tapes over. Over and over. <laughs> Brother Allen, you don't even know this, but it's probably the third camp meeting I was there. I didn't have no money. I had two preaching tapes. Well, Brother Lee Robertson was preaching on give and it shall be given unto you. <laughs> Brother Allen, you gave me a whole stack of tapes and I took him tapes, but God, God was in that because they carried me. They carried me. And then I watched my kids come up. And uh, it's so easy when you grow up in it just to be used to it. I don't ever, ever want to get used to this, do you? And I, I wonder tonight, I really want to be sensitive to the Lord. I wonder tonight, you know what we need? We need another generation of young people. I had to lay on an altar somewhere and say, God, I, I don't want to play games. 
just what you preach today. Sell out, lock, stock, and bear. Lord, I'm yours. Bow our heads for just a moment. I, you don't have to come because I'm, I'm giving this invitation. I, I'm not asking you to do that, to draw a crowd. I, that's just in my heart. I remember one night laying on an altar saying, God, I'm yours. Whatever you want to do, you can have me. Best decision I ever made. God's looking for some young people tonight. Best decision I ever made. I gave it all to the Lord. You obey God tonight. I wouldn't care if I had to walk over ten people to get down this aisle. You're going to have to walk over a whole lot more people than what's in this auditorium. If you live for Jesus. You need to come tonight. You mind God. That's it. That's it tonight. Don't be afraid to come. God's speaking to you. says a staff member back there was talking about you truly had to repent of your sins the other day and um we were in the shower room and um to be honest I was we were talking about the rapture last night and um I asked Miss Liz um how much how much time do I have left in the shower and she never answered me and um I, to be completely honest I was so scared that the rapture happened last night and I was just left and um that's what I knew today um I was like, Lord, if, if I'm not saved, you, you show me, Lord, and um, you show me, and I just, I praise the Lord that I really got saved today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody ought to thank God, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's one more pulled from the burning this way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good to us? This lady got saved. Hallelujah. Tell me. Go ahead, Brother Blankenship. Shout it out, brother. Hallelujah. Help yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Go ahead. 
Amen. Tell it, preacher. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for saving me tonight. Um, I've been in his home for four years. And um, three years ago, I made a, pro a false profession um, that I got saved. But there was, there was really no repentance. And um, since the storm has started this morning, um, I've been fighting, fighting with the Lord and fighting with the devil about um, trying to convince myself that I'm saved. And... Um, I just thank God that I can settle it tonight and that I know for sure that I'm not going to hell. And that there's, there's a better place for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't have to worry anymore where I'm going. If you live to be a hundred, you won't never have to worry where you're going. Don't it feel good to pillow your head tonight? And no, you don't have to worry about where you're going to spend eternity. Some of y'all think we're at the benediction. We may just be getting started. Isn't that right? They, it wouldn't surprise me if God saved 20 people tonight. I'd stay here all night. Wouldn't you stay here all night, Brother D? I'd stay here till daybreak. See God save some people. Hallelujah. That's right. There's enough God in here to save a multitude tonight. You just obey the Lord. We preach to sinners. Why don't we pray for sinners tonight? Why don't we all bow our heads tonight and just let's pray for sinners. Let's have an old-fashioned prayer meeting from the back pew all the way to the back of the choir tonight. You think there's enough of us if we went to asking the Lord to save some people tonight? That's right. That's it. Let's just pray. Spirit of God, start moving on some hearts tonight. He already is. If you're here tonight and you're lost, why don't you surrender to Jesus? Why don't you come to this old-fashioned altar tonight? Come on, sinner.
get saved. This young lady got saved tonight. I wouldn't be critical about all these girls getting saved. I wouldn't dare criticize this. Isn't that right? Hey, you know what? God, I mean, I'm not a Calvinist, but I'm going to say this. I do believe in the sovereignty. And I do believe in the providential hand of God, don't you? Brother Blankenship, I don't believe that you coming here was an accident. I'm not going to be critical of every one of these girls, and I'm not promoting nothing, but if they all got saved, I'm not criticizing them. For all I know, the Holy Ghost let them stop by Rossville, Georgia, so they could.